Morning all, Tuesday, <clears throat> what's the time? 7.10. Uh, 7.10 on Tuesday, last day of November, I believe. It is 30th. Uh, wow. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm having loads of fun with these financial markets. Um, I think the levels are working really, really well. I don't. I think no matter what you traded yesterday, you couldn't fail to make money. Um, gold held that uh, support at 1782.79, so good bounce off there. Where's gold this morning? Okay, gold's about 10 points up, so good profit. Silver's testing very strong support around 2300, right now, actually, as I speak. So we'll see if that holds and bounces like gold did already. Um, just looking at my notes, sorry. Uh, Aussie and the news and the Kiwi both um, saw a high for the day exactly at the first resistance levels. Uh, if you manage to sell there, I think I sold, actually, I sold the Aussie yen. Um, that also saw a high for the day exactly at the first resistance level up to 81.30. So that worked really well. Uh, Aussie yen is now down at 80.50. I'm still short that actually. <coughs> um, the um, well, anyway, there was just loads, loads of easy trades. Uh, the CAD yen long, if you were long from 80.50.30, that really worked nicely. We topped only 10 pips from resistance at 89.50, so we we're talking about 90 pip profit potentially on that trade. Uh, actually, euro US dollar is fairly quiet, that's not really one that seems to be worth trading at the moment. Um, dollar CAD that hit my first buy level on the spreadsheet, which was at 127.35.25. Uh, we're about 50 pips higher at the moment. We've been even higher, but I think that's going to keep going because you know that I think the dollar will remain strong. Um, we had good trades in pound versus the Canadian. Um, now then, uh, right, well, and, and some other trades as well. But anyway, I'll leave it there. Now the stock markets, they they were terrific. Well, firstly, we we bounced back further than I expected. I will admit that. Um, let's have a look at the S&P on the daily chart. Yeah, I'm going to focus on, on the um, stock markets for obvious reasons. We are really moving around and it's been, yeah, as I say, great fun. Right, now, one key point is that on the weekly chart, we I, I didn't mention this yesterday. I actually thought we were just going to continue lower, so it wasn't particularly relevant. But we, we saw a decent bounce back. Now, look, uh, wait a minute, let me grab that. Um, this is a, a pretty big bearish engulfing candle on the weekly chart. Much, it's more significant than a bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart because, as you know, if you've been following me for a long time, um, the weekly charts, the longer term charts, are more important. Um, obviously, um, the bigger traders are looking at the longer term charts. Right. We, we did have, if you remember correct, if you remember, we had a bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart. Uh, where was that? Oh, no, we didn't get it on, on the evening. Oh, yes, we did. Here it was. Wasn't as big as the NASDAQ, but still, we had a bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart. Now we've got one on the weekly chart. So, no negative pattern. Uh, actually, no, I'm lying. There was a negative pattern. Now, do you remember I talked to you about this head and shoulders pattern yesterday in the E-mini S&P, which had been broken, and the market has very kindly just given us the opportunity, oops, to re, that's not quite the trend line, that's not quite the neckline, but anyway, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, break down, um, big drop, and how kind of the market to offer us a selling opportunity, bang on, the neckline, the moving averages on the one hour chart, just the perfect resistance level. I had that around 46.55, 65 yesterday, and the market hit it and just kindly reversed overnight. I've woken up to a real nice profit on my trading account this morning. Um, and, and down we go. Look, this, this does look pretty negative to me. I think this could be only the start of something to the downside now in the s and I didn't, I didn't jump the gun too quickly on the, on the bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart. I said, hey, that might just mean we move sideways. We did for three days, but we've now got the bearish engulfing candle on the weekly chart um, and on the daily chart, and we've got the head and shoulders, and we've got a retest of the neckline of the head and shoulders. The hourly moving averages are obviously turning increasingly negative. Um, the four hour chart, uh, where are we now? The four hour chart, we're, we're trading below the 50, the 100. They're also working as resistance yesterday. We're trading now below the 500, um, uh, well, sorry, the 200 uh, period moving average on the four hour chart. Where are we on the daily chart? Not so bad. Now, NASDAQ, look at this one. So the NASDAQ, a big bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart. Let's check it out on the weekly chart. Big bearish engulfing candle. Can you see that on the weekly chart? Quite rare, really. Um, well, we had one here, and we didn't we didn't have much of a follow through. Three days of losses. So, 
uh, and we haven't had any follow through yet this week, but still, it's a pretty, it's a very big bearish engulfing candle. And now we had a head and shoulders pattern which worked. And I've, ta I've, ta I've talked to you a lot about how we get head and shoulders patterns within head and shoulders patterns. And this is what's probably happening now. This is my new head and shoulders pattern. So left shoulder head, and this really is far more significant. Uh, left shoulder head, right shoulder. Now, um, I'm looking at this on the four hour chart. If I'm right, and this is the four hour chart, I could even draw on that. Let me draw on that. Let me just make that absolutely clear. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. I want to do this. Um, so we have, oh gosh, okay, I haven't done that properly. What am I, why am I not doing that? Ah, okay. Um, not used this before. Right, here we go. Yeah. So I've got the potential right shoulder, uh, left shoulder rather, the potential head going down to here. So this is the bottom of the you know the next of the next line now if this is a um, a right shoulder which i think probably it is and then we break the neckline um we've got some serious declines to come uh, or at least uh, we we well the measured target we'll have a look at that measured target if we break it tomorrow but for now that really does look like something very significant indeed um we've already had a beautiful head and shoulders pattern i think it was in the was it in the dow jones right let's have a look at this one yeah we've already had a um, head and shoulders pattern in the dow jones and that's really worked nicely yesterday we got really close to the to the neckline to the head and shoulders as you can see and we're plunging again let me just have a look at a bigger chart and see if we could form something bigger no not on there let's have a look at the daily chart uh, I suppose it is entirely possible that we form a bigger head and shoulders pattern. But anyway, I'm jumping the gun here. No, hang on. Let me look at the daily chart. Um, yeah. Okay, so look at the daily chart. We are holding the 200-day moving average. Now, I bet if I go back... Um, okay, so we've got data just going back here. But look, uh, that really has been a, a perfect support line. And it has held again today perfectly so um it will be interesting to see if that breaks around sort of 34 400 we break below 34 400 that breaks the 200 day moving average we haven't had a break of that for quite a long time so that would be significant i think it's going to happen i think we're going down um okay the s p is nowhere near the daily moving averages i'm just going to check the nasdaq i'm certain that's nowhere near it because that's actually been stronger yeah it's actually the dow jones that has been the weakest but this is a glaringly obvious uh, head head and shoulders pattern it looks to me like it will look like it. Well, there's a high chance it will form. OK, um, Aussie and the New Zealand dollar continue to go lower. It's definitely a risk off situation. So we've got the yen climbing, the dollar climbing, gold actually holding up. I, I thought gold might break lower yesterday, but it's still holding my support level down at uh, 1782, 1779. If you've been buying that over the last couple of weeks, you've really done well. Um, First resistance is around 1800, as you know from my report. Second resistance around 1850, 1816. I think if we're going to break anywhere, I think gold will, will break to the downside eventually because, well, you know my theories on gold, not an inflation hedge, not a safe haven. Um, okay, well, look, all, all, the, um, all the, let's have a look at the Germany 40. All the reports are out. You know all the levels. Um, as I say, tremendous day yesterday. What's going on in the, in the DAX? I, you know, clearly we, um, falling significantly now. We had a bearish engulfing candle in the DAX on the daily chart as well. That, was it a, was it an engulfing? Yes, it was here. Now that's really triggered significant losses. Poor old um, European investors, DAX, FTSE, just totally underperforming the US markets, but maybe the US markets will fall a lot harder. Who knows? Um, okay, no bearish engulfing candle on the Germany 40, to be fair. If you trade the Euro stocks, the levels have worked absolutely beautifully in that, by the way. Um, Eurostocks can be a great market. Their levels really do hold. Um, okay, look, I think probably more, more um, action to the downside. Not sure what triggered this big um, move this morning. I think it might be a headline in the FT from, I think it was the boss of Pfizer or one of the um, drug companies saying that the vaccine is less likely to be effective against this new strain because the market really did dump very, very uh, swiftly, so maybe it was the release of, of the FT. Uh, that's all I could see this morning that, that, that could have been the trigger. Uh, but certainly, markets remain nervous. And the thing is, we've got these negative patterns. 
it's showing to me that you know the flow of money is is um, pushing markets lower and that will continue you know the, the, these bear trends are developing basically so that i think more of that right uh, i've said enough uh, if you need me you know how to contact me good luck today we'll have a chat again tomorrow